This particular video deals with a formal debate on the subject of scientific evidence for intelligent design versus scientific evidence for a non-theistic, chaotic, random metaphysical Darwinian evolution for all we see in the universe. The radiometric dating techniques at first glance seem to support an Earth that is 4.6 billion years old. A major assumption, however, that underlies all radiometric dating techniques is that the rates of radioactive decay have been constant for 4.6 billion years, even though we've only observed radioactive decay for 90 years. This bold, critical, and untestable assumption is made even though no one knows what triggers radioactive decay. The public has been greatly misled concerning the consistency and trustworthiness of radiometric dating techniques. Many of the published radiometric dates can only be checked by comparisons with the assumed ages for the fossils that sometimes lie above and below radiometrically dated rock. In a study of over 400 of these published checks, about half, the radiometrically determined ages were at least one geologic period in error indicating that something is drastically wrong. One wonders how many other dating checks were not even published because they too were in error. There are many geological mysteries on the earth that I believe can only be explained in terms of a global cataclysmic flood. It would take at least an hour to describe these mysteries, to show how the flood can best explain them, to show that evolutionary explanations are inadequate, to establish the proper background for what happened during this catastrophe and to trace out the major events of the flood and to make predictions that in future years will be the basis for testing and potentially falsifying my explanation. We don't have time to get into this huge, huge subject, although I did this morning at a seminar which many of you attended. If Dr. Richardson and Mr. Bradding believe that evolutionary theories give an adequate explanation for what caused these mysteries, then I will be able, be happy to point out the contradictory evidence. Most evolutionists consider the fossil record to be their strongest evidence. Actually, the fossil record clearly shows rapid death and burial by sedimentary material laid down through water. Many fossils, such as fossilized jellyfish, show by the details of their fall, soft, fleshy portions that they were buried rapidly before they could decay. Billions of other animals were buried in mass graves and in twisted and contorted positions. Extreme flattening of fossils and fossils that cut across two or more strata also imply violent and rapid burial. Every major mountain range on the earth contains fossils of sea life. This all fits the creation view of a catastrophic global flood. Also, Practically every ancient culture on Earth has legends telling of a traumatic flood. Bones of many modern-looking humans have also been found deep in rocks that by evolutionary dating techniques were supposedly formed many millions of years before man began to evolve. Published examples include the Calaveras skulls and hundreds of their stone-eating utensils, the Castanadello skeletons, Rex skeleton, and many others. These human remains are ignored by evolutionists. Man-made objects have been found encased in coal, a thimble, a spoon, an iron pot, an iron instrument of some sort, an eight-carat gold chain, and a metallic vessel inlaid with silver. Many other out-of-place artifacts have been found inside deeply buried rocks, such as nails, a screw, a strange coin, a clay figurine, and a strange hammer. By evolutionary dating techniques, these objects, obviously made by man, would be hundreds of millions of years older than man. Again, something is wrong. If evolution happened, the fossil record should show continuous and gradual changes from the bottom to the top layers and between all forms of life. Just the opposite is found. There are millions of missing links. To bridge these gaps, evolution requires too many miracles and leaps of faith. 
What could possibly have evolved between a starfish or any other animal with a backbone and a, the fish, an animal with a backbone? There must have been thousands of intermediate forms leading up to the fish. None have been found. Insects, a class comprising 80% of all known animals, living or extinct, have no evolutionary ancestors. And there are hundreds of other gaps as well. Furthermore, many complex species appear suddenly in the lowest layers. Sponges, worms, mollusks, corals, trilobites, and brachiopods appear suddenly with no sign of gradual evolutionary development. In fact, representatives of all animal and plant phyla have now been found in this bottom Cambrian layer, including flowering plants, angiosperms, vascular plants, and fossils of fish vertebrates. This Cambrian explosion certainly contradicts the evolutionary story which we were all taught that there is a nice gradation from simple at the bottom to complex at the top. That is simply not true. Also the vertical sequencing of the fossils is frequently not in the assumed evolutionary order. For example, several different scientists have found spores of pollen, spores and pollen of gymnosperms and angiosperms near the bottom of the Grand Canyon because these layers were supposedly laid down before the explosion of multicellular life, these results are absolutely devastating to evolution and are precisely what one would expect of a worldwide flood. We have been greatly misled by stories that primitive ape-like men have been found. Piltdown Man is now an acknowledged hoax, perhaps the greatest hoax in all of science. And yet it was in the textbooks for over 40 years. Nebraska man, shown here, was based on a single tooth. That tooth turned out to belong to an extinct pig. Prior to 1977, the known remains of Ramapithecus consisted merely of a handful of teeth and jaw fragments. It is now known that these fragments were pieced together incorrectly by Lewis Leakey and others so as to resemble portions of the human jaw. Ramapithecus was just an ape. The discoverer of Java Man later acknowledged that Java Man was similar to a large gibbon and that he had withheld evidence to that effect. Peking Man is considered by many experts to be the remains of apes that were systematically decapitated and exploited for food by humans. Detailed computer studies of the Australopithecines have shown that they are not ancestral to man and living apes. The Australopithecines, which were made famous by Lewis and Mary Leakey, are actually quite distinct from both man and living apes. Lucy, a type of Australopithecine, was initially believed to have walked upright in a human manner. Studies of Lucy's entire anatomy, not just her knee joints, now show that this is highly improbable. Lucy probably swung from the trees. For about a hundred years, the world was led to believe that Neanderthal man was stooped and ape-like. Recent studies show that this erroneous belief was based upon some Neanderthal men who were cripple, crippled with arthritis and rickets. Neanderthal man, Heidelberg man, and Cro-Magnon man were completely human, homo sapiens. Artists' depictions, especially of the fleshy portions of their bodies, are quite imaginative and are not supported by the evidence. If you like our YouTube channel, please subscribe by clicking on the subscribe button and then by also clicking the bell above to get an automatic update whenever we produce another YouTube video for our Sea Answers TV channel. Please share our videos with your friends and relatives. May God bless you. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what is done for Christ will last. To see the full length video, please select by tapping on the first screen to the right. To see the entire playlist where this particular video is found, select by tapping on a touch screen on a cell phone or by clicking on a regular computer. The second screen to the right.